Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Monday. How's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully you're having a fantastic start to your week. This is your weekly dose of Tech Live here Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern every week. Except there'll be a little break in the summertime. But other than that, we're live all the time. Glitch is here, Scotty's here, Curtis is here, Tony is here. Uh, there's a bunch of other people and I have already lost track. <laughs> It's been a, a little hectic getting ready for the broadcast tonight, but it looks like we're good. Scotty says we're good. Glitch says we're good. Cheers, guys. How is everyone doing? Hopefully you're having a fantastic beginning of the week. I'll just get things queued up and we'll get right into it. As usual, viewer comments throughout, just throw them in the chat. I try and keep up and lately I've been able to do not bad. I do miss comments here and there, but I try. Some tech news this week, bunch of cool tech news, some stuff from the viewer projects, stuff from you guys, a uh, bunch of stuff from the community of hackers, makers, inventors, you name it, it all goes here. I try and handpick some YouTube channels and videos every week to show off. A little bit from the shop, a little bit of a sneak peek, and that will take us right into the broadcast. Uh, Ken says all hot in Calgary today, nice. Uh, yeah, it was a rough day glitch. It's been a, a little bit nutty today. Uh, it's it's a Monday, put it that way. And working in uh, software slash tech support, it gets a little hectic at times. Okie dokie, what do we got? Tech news this week. CNET showed off the HTC Vive virtual reality headset slash system. Has anyone tried this yet? Because I don't think these videos and online coverage really do it justice. I would love to try one of these full immersion virtual reality systems. I think it would be amazing. This video did a pretty good job of showing off uh, what was going on inside the headset by projecting it outside as well so bystanders can get an idea of what the user is looking at. I thought that was interesting. Uh, definitely hard to depict these online. Uh, I think CNET did a pretty good job as usual. Crazy news last week. If you're into space, like a lot of the people that watch this channel are uh, big meteor meteor over Arizona last week tons of amazing footage of it and captures of it this thing it was big and bright I never did hear of any damage from it but uh, I, I enjoyed watching some of the video coverage you can find this one on the lol one channel with a, a single subscriber but they're gonna get some views on their video pretty cool coverage from a dash cam and also from the news, 50 years since the America's first lunar surveyor landed on the moon. NASA JPL YouTube channel put out this video. Really well done. Cool documentary with the original footage of it. And this is something I haven't seen much of. Uh, the original technical coverage, because this is long before my time and many others that have watched this channel. Uh, really neat to see how they made out and how they did on their their numbers where they thought it would be and when they thought it would land and the velocities and it just worked out very well very very cool coverage to see a new video cut together good job jpl and newsy also covered the u.s government oh wrong button may soon approve the first private moon mission. And this is something I didn't know. The U.S. government has to sign off on any uh, lunar lander uh, because of the treaties that they have and internal rules and the danger to the Earth by bringing things back and danger to polluting the moon by taking things there. So... Uh, it sounds like they're very close and this goes this will be this one was one in particular i can't remember the team name for the lunar x prize which is many millions of dollars uh, for the first one there so pretty cool uh neat coverage but newsy I, I enjoyed it lots of space this week crazy tech week so space station the inflatable uh, module has been inflated and today jeff williams entered it for the first time without a vent pretty neat an inflatable 
<laughs> bubble on the ISS that went up basically in the trunk of the capsule going up as a extra payload and this thing is a, a, a small hab environment if nothing else I'm sure they could use it for storage pretty pretty cool stuff uh, neat to see that it worked out blows me away though I, I had to google this I'll be honest I didn't know what pressure they keep the ISS at uh, I assumed it would it would have to be something fairly low for some of these thin walls and these hab modules. It turns out it, they keep it at like 14.7 psi, same as sea level on Earth. That's pretty impressive for this inflatable module to to be able to do that. It it is durable and rugged. Like 15 pounds per square inch is serious business. So pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Good like said marshmallows in space. <laughs> Nathan's here. Hey, Nathan. What else we got? Elon Musk. <laughs> he hit the news again big time. Pretty much everything he says ends up being news. This one I thought was really cool and worth sharing. You can find this on the Newsy channel as well. Elon Musk thinks we're basically living in a video game. Well, they hyped that title up because he deliberately didn't. He just answered with odds of this. The the simulation theory I was familiar with long before this came up last week, and it's something that I've, I've found interesting for years. Basically, it's a speculation that maybe we're all in a simulation, and reality as we know it maybe isn't quite what we think it is. And it's pretty hard to dispute because if you do the run rate of where our VR is going and then tack on like 10,000 years, which is nothing in the lifetime of the universe, where would we be? How would we be able to dis distinguish real from fake? And uh, Elon did a very good job of handling this interview. I He really did an awesome job. I thought it was fantastic. It's well worth watching. The Newsy channel it was just a quick snippet of it. You can find the full reviews, uh, full videos on YouTube. You just have to go searching. I, I forgot to grab the link right before the broadcast. And what else we got? <laughs> Windows. I have to I have to share this. Windows update. Microsoft using malware tactics to force force Windows 10 on users. I'll put this out there. I totally agree with it. I think what Windows has done with their pushy crap and basically malware approach to getting people to adopt Windows 10, I find is absolutely disgusting and really annoying. I'm sick of clicking that box and I've even done the removal more than once and they continue to find ways around it. My wife's laptop, actually, she's been clicking no as well. Sure enough, hers updated this weekend. Must not have clicked it rapid enough, and it forced Windows 10 on her. I thought, this is just this is bad business. Really, really poor business. Lots of this coverage on lots of tech sites this week because it, it kind of blew up again with the, the, <laughs> the recent push. Let me know what you guys think of that. Do you guys think it's all right for your Windows 7 to continually push to upgrade to Windows 10 and if you don't put input in it'll do it automatically let me know what you guys think I'd be interested and ARS Technica reporting on the team viewer hack not even sure how to word this I think a few of you have seen this. I'm pretty sure I saw it on Glitch's Twitter too. TeamViewer confirms number of hacked user accounts is significant. A lot of people use TeamViewer, myself included. And it's debatable as of now how all these users ended up with intrusions into their systems. Initially, TeamViewer said it was poor password control on the user's part and it was not their problem. But now when they're admitting the number is significant, it doesn't admit that it was on their side, but it sure seems like it. Uh, not a good thing because TeamViewer, most people that use it, a lot of people that use it have their computers set up for unattended access. It's one of the major features of TeamViewer. Unattended access, boom, somebody's in, your browser remembers your password for your PayPal or whatever other accounts, your online banking, and it takes like three seconds for somebody to go in and transfer some cash and do some silly things. 
interesting to see where this will go. I think by next week we'll hear more on this. I don't know who's at fault or where the penetration came in, but I have yet to receive an email from TeamViewer indicating that I should reset my passwords. I have done so already. I did so last week as a preemptive measure. I haven't gotten anything from TeamViewer yet. I'm a little disappointed in that. Let me get, let me know what you guys think. And what else we got? <laughs> Lots of talk on the windows. And yeah, Tony said it on the windows. Just click to decline when it's installed. Yeah, I'm going to do that on the wife's computer. I haven't done it yet. I've got to roll it back. And Glitch said they think it's password reuse from the LinkedIn breach. Very well could be. Still surprised that TeamViewer didn't put out at least some information saying, hmm, I guess that's a little bit of liability if they did that too. But definitely plausible. I agree, Glitch. Crazy stuff. Something people should be aware of though, especially if they have TeamViewer accounts. Why did that repeat? Don't know, but a lot of talk on this one. This one was a snapshot from The Verge. Researchers want a big red button for shutting down, shutting down rogue AI. This is nothing new, but it came to a head again last week in a lot of major media outlets. With the current advancements in artificial intelligence, especially software-wise, for online data. There's been some crazy stuff and I couldn't get the articles in before the show. There's a lot of concern that this AI can get out of control and now they're going back to how do we put a kill switch in that can't be overridden by the AI. And this is getting pretty serious. It's a bit of a struggle to know how to do it that the AI couldn't be smart enough to shut it off. Just these ones using online data and uh, peer groups to there was a prediction of the u.s election i think is one there was a prediction of one of the major it was the oscars i believe that hit basically all of them right the ai guessed who was going to win just by online data interesting because ai gets smart enough to go google how to shut off the kill switch or how is my kill switch constructed and maybe it could figure it out interesting that this this is finally this is serious it's it's happening so we'll see where it goes a uh, lot of news check it out on the verge good article on it i thought it was very interesting what else we got this one isn't really tech news but i thought it was interesting interesting worth sharing uh another malaysia airlines incident this one uh one of their passenger jets just got the crud kicked out of it due to turbulence on a recent flight i believe it was yesterday the pictures from it are a little stunning uh i would not have wanted to be on this flight i think i think it's a little funny because just because the information and the pictures are available now. Everyone has smartphones and good cameras on them at all times, and we get to see. I, I personally haven't run into this. I fly a lot. I've taken hundreds of flights in the last few years and never seen anything like this. So hopefully it doesn't happen anytime soon. And what else we got? Space Madness. And... Let's go. Come on, computer. Community support. Guys, if you don't mind, if you would take a moment at some point, check out my Patreon page. It's linked below. The people that support me on Patreon really, really help with this channel, and the money all goes back into the channel. And I, I seldom plug the Patreon on this show, but I wanted to today. Uh, one reason, I'm looking at... I'm looking at upgrading my editing software to something I can do much better with. But to do so, I'm looking at the Adobe package. And I'll be honest, the Adobe package, is, the best case scenario is $50 a month to uh, to actually sub subscribe to the Creative Cloud and get the, the newest Adobe software versus the five-year-old one I'm using. So, oh, scared me <laughs> thank you joseph <laughs> appreciate that live tips are also appreciated very much 
But I'm looking at getting... This is where all this money goes. I'm looking at getting some... Uh, the new Adobe software. But like I mentioned, it's bloody expensive. So you can check me out on Patreon. Throw a buck in there. Or you can donate it live. Remember, click that thumbs up if you like this video. Click that thumbs down if you don't. Somebody already did before the show even started. Share it out on socials. Truly appreciate it. Thank you for all your support, guys. And... couple announcements i added a whole bunch more stuff to the store which is linked below it's the amazon affiliate store it's uh amazon products hosted directly on the site stuff that hopefully maybe you wouldn't have known about that i'm i handpick every one of them basically every one of them hopefully you guys find them of interest lots of people do check out the store and one last call for the Arduino 101 giveaway. There's a video on this channel on how to enter. If you haven't yet already and you want an, a free Arduino 101, this will be the last call to go ahead and enter that contest. All you gotta do is follow me on Instagram and tag someone on the post. I will ship that anywhere in the world. Next week, I think, we'll do the giveaway. Thank you to all those who have entered and I hope you enjoy your Arduino 101, whoever wins. Intel gave it to me free and I'm giving it free again. One last small announcement. This is a design that I punched up real quick. Actually, I didn't do it really quick. It's a design for one of several different t-shirts I'm looking at putting, posting out there for sale if anybody wants them. Uh, this is not official yet and won't happen for probably multiple more weeks, but I thought I'd share with you guys a bunch of different kind of interesting t-shirt designs and uh, a lot of maker stuff and hacker inventor stuff and uh, I'll try and keep the price at minimum if anybody's interested I'll share a link when that time comes and do 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 come in there we go viewer projects I always want to see what you guys are making hit me up on the socials throw it in the G plus community Educates.tv shared with us his uh, voltmeter project. Very interesting project. I love the Nokia 5110 LCD display. I think these things are great. He did uh, he did a standalone module to make it easy for people to get started and know how to do it. But all all that module is is two resistors. It's just a voltage divider. So you can definitely do this with any two resistors that you have available that are in a wide swath of values you can make a, a voltage divider easy enough so it was really cool he shared this i think adafruit picked it up today and shared it on their blog too so educates.tv cool channel beginners tech shared with us uh, a repost of another video of making a homemade ac regulated power supply this i thought was really cool i had seen the video i i didn't share it here on the live show and i probably should have so it was cool. Thank you, Beginners Tech, for sharing that with us. Anyel was looking for some help with uh, some servo dimensions, and I love this. I, this is not someone sharing their project. I wanted to share this because he got uh, a bunch of comments back right away and got the information he was looking for within the G Plus community. You can find a link below. Uh, that alone right there, one-time deal if it helps someone out that was worth making the community right there so i'm happy people are using it thought it was kind of cool and that is that what else we got uh chat's having unicode character issues <laughs> yeah we haven't had that problem yet wouldn't surprise me and saturn 5 tony said you should make the skull look more like an ic ship chip but shaped like a skull yeah i could try that i'm not good with graphic design so i'm doing what i can and not devoting a lot of time to it as you guys know i have a lot of stuff on my plate but definitely look for some input on those designs if we can ever get them live i'm actually waiting on the approval from amazon on that through the Amazon merch program. So unless I can get that to go, I'm not going to produce them. It's too much trouble doing Teespring and other things. So uh, yeah, we'll see. And uh, Scotty said, STM sat one passing over you in 10 minutes. Ah, cool. Uh, 
I I don't have no actually that would have been cool if I didn't reboot I would have actually had my Orbitron still set up and tracking it Saturday evening at about 7 41 p.m. local time the STM1 CubeSat was scheduled to do a 89 degree pass over me and I missed it uh, getting home from supper five minutes late but I wanted to have a look no one has successfully caught that yet but I on Twitter, I get the impression that people maybe aren't looking across all frequencies. I get the impression that the STM SAT team probably isn't really well versed in the radio frequencies to begin with. I think they were using pretty basic stuff. So, um, yeah, check it out. Hopefully you catch it. Let me know if you catch anything from it. Um, uh, we won't be off the air quite early enough, but we'll be close. And then I will try again next good pass, which will probably be many days away now. What else we got? Um, William said I made it. I'm trying to remember for weeks now. Cool. That's cool. What else we got? From the community of hackers, makers, inventors, you name it, everything goes here. EV Blog did a video last week on the Audi Quattro Moon Rover. He did another one this week. I thought this one was fantastic. It was better than the first one. Not only do we get to see the Audi Lunar Rover, they went over in detail what the mission plan is, and I thought it was absolutely fascinating. What they're planning is to actually land very close to the Apollo 17 mission. 17? Correct me if I'm wrong on that horrible with those numbers i think it was 17 but they actually have to be very careful because that area is is off limits it's a historical monument blah 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 so they want to land very very close to it and that's what they're shooting for which is totally awesome because well that would be worth the trip to put the uh the conspiracy theorists uh, away once and for all to well, actually, I still wouldn't put them over, make them quiet, but it would be very cool if they could send down some high-res imagery of the actual landing site. So, EV blog, awesome channel, awesome coverage on it. Uh, Joseph said, Eric, if I click on one of those Amazon US item and just buy. Yeah, you can go through, if it's through my store, you can go through and it takes you, it checks you out through Amazon. Um, just standard Amazon. It'll actually revert to whatever country you're in. I have both the Canadian and the US, and I don't think the UK is working now. Or you can use the affiliate link down below, and it just takes you right to Amazon, and anything you buy there gets a... I get a small little royalty, but either way. The, the makeme.org store, I set that up mainly because I can share products that I've personally bought, and, and all the details on them very easily in one place, as well as products that people probably haven't bought and maybe never even heard of. So anyway, yeah, the, the store takes you right through to Amazon for checkout. And PXN America, where should a guy go to check the pass schedule? If that is for the STM sat, you need to download the TLE um, from uh, any of the TLE sources. It's linked from the STMSAT website and dump it into whatever program you use. I don't think there's any online tracking of it. It's too small. Um, there might be, but easiest, I use Orbitron. Dump the, dump the info into a TLE uh, file, which you can find a video how to do that on my channel under the light sail, tracking the light sail satellite. The process is identical. Just different website. And let's go. Hopefully that helps, guys. Flight test video just went out this evening. The guy on the right, Andre Russo. The guy on the left, Josh Bixler, of course. Uh, Andre, has he's been here for this show many, many, many times. I spoke to him many, many times, and he is now finally broken out and got right on the flight test video. He spent some time in Ohio, I believe it was last week or the week before. Cool to see him on camera, and he got to do a really cool review of the Durafly Tundra aircraft. Bunch of RC stuff this week, disclaimer. 
Uh, really, really, really neat to see a community member that's been here on this show for so long uh, get some exposure rate on flight tests, and they link to his YouTube channel, which is pretty cool of them. And what else we got? Scotty said N2YO.com has live tracking. Very cool. I didn't think they would have the CubeSat listed. I really didn't. I thought it would be too small. But doesn't surprise me. Anything's possible nowadays. DJI, uh, cool YouTube channel. I have to give them props. I didn't expect a manufacturer channel to be this good. Uh, here's a little mini documentary you can find on the Snotbot, uh, a DJI Inspire that they're using to collect the mucus from whale spouts, from the, the exhalation from large whales, to do serious science really really neat cool use for drone tech cool to see DJ, dji sharing it out and doing a good job on the videos pretty neat a channel i don't believe i have ever shared here before uh i'm not even going to spell that out <laughs> ezekiel 12 12 12 uh copv COFPV is uh, the header that multiple channels are using. I don't even know what it stands for. I love these videos. If you're into RC and FPV, they do one heck of a job. Really cool long range flights using Dragon Link radio systems down the side of crazy scenic mountains. And they always do an awesome job. Really well color graded, cool music. They're just stellar. One of the most underrated YouTube channels ever. Uh, 1,300 subscribers. This one could easily be 100,000 plus with the quality of videos they put out. So if you're into RC and FPV, check them out. Uh, William said, will you do a video on the best aerial video drones, please? Well, I only have the small cheap ones to compare and my DJI Phantom. There are a couple videos on the DJI Phantom on my channel but the the one I will have one more coming with the 10 best tips that I have maybe 12 best tips for aerial videography quadcopters slash drones I won't be comparing any of the big namers anytime soon unless uh, some suppliers step up to send them to me uh, lots of suppliers want to send me the sub $100 versions but not so many for the uh, five to five hundred to thousand range, which I think is where you need to spend money if you want a good aerial video platform. Hopefully that helps, William. And Colorado FPV, thank you, Glitch. That's exactly what it stands for. That's right. Uh, that's what they are, and it's multiple members. And there is at least two channels that I've seen their videos on. That's right. Thank you. Awesome videos. Colorado FPV. They just do a hell of a job. Raspberry Pi guy. I'm not sure whether I've shared this channel here, to be to be honest. Uh, 50,000 subscribers. Awesome channel if you're into Raspberry Pi stuff. This video uh, really hit one out of the park. Full video from start to finish using the Amazon Alexa uh, software only to basically make yourself an Amazon Alexa system. Uh, basically, like the <laughs> thanks, Jay. <laughs> uh, basically, like the uh, a Siri, but using the Amazon system, and I think it's far more powerful than Siri from what I've seen. I haven't got to play with it, but this video start to finish, take a pie through, gives you the code, gives you his own GitHub, all the work is done, absolutely stellar job. Um, I, I'm i tempted to pick up, you need the sensor shield to, to do his right out of the box. I'm really tempted to pick one up. Uh, really cool video guys, check it out. And Jay asked, where is the beer at? It is right here. Cheers, Jay. Thank you for the donation. I truly appreciate that. I will put it to good use. And Glitch has got some FPV videos coming up. Cool stuff. And... Do, do, do. What else we got? Channel I have shared here before, but... 
just needed to be shared again. Cody's loud. This guy completely blows me away with what he does every week. A lot of stuff on minerals, chemistry, uh, mining, you name it. This was uh, a five-day heavy water challenge. Uh, I put this out last week, whereby he, for a class project for, I guess, is he in night school or university night school or full-time university? I, I, I don't know. Uh, for a class, he decided to, instead of sampling water, looking for uh, its makeup, he decided to create his own heavy water. Unbelievable. Who creates their own heavy water? Um, it just blows me away. And he was successful. It did work. Maybe not quite the purity he was after fully, but pretty darn close. Really cool stuff. And... <laughs> One more, at least one last one on the drone slash quadcopters. This is not a channel I subscribe to. Uh, I found it linked because it went a little viral last week. A woman steals drone, GoPro records it all. Basically, these guys were flying, uh, looked like 250 size racing quads or sounded like it in the background. And he lost control of his and it landed on the ground. I won't go over the details. You guys should check out the video. If you're into quadcopters and racing quads, uh, the bystander lady actually got pretty hysterical, stole his quad, hid it under her shirt while the GoPro was rolling, called the police. The police were amazing. I think the guys did just about everything right, other than it wasn't totally clear whether they had permission, good permission to be on this site in the first place. But overall, it was very interesting. It's worth watching. Uh, at the end of it, the moral of the story is be ambassadors for the hobby and do the right thing. And I think they did pretty good in this video. It was cool. It was interesting. And... Grant Thompson, another channel, uh, big, big YouTube channel. Uh, I, I usually don't share his videos here because I just take it for granted that a lot of the people here are already subscribers. This is a 5.8 million subscriber channel, but just in case you aren't, Grant does some pretty cool stuff on the channel. They are high production quality videos, and this week it was a... Uh, how to make exploding targets out of water bottles. Quite simply, just pressurize them up to an arbitrary pressure value and uh, use them as impact explosion targets. Uh, made me a little leery what he was doing with them, handling them by hand, and as well as being so close when he was exploding these things. But hey, get on you, Grant. Thanks for sharing. Check out Grant's channel if you're into... If you're here at all, you should be subscribed to his channel. He does a lot of cool maker projects. And AVE, another massive channel I've shared here numerous times, but I had to share this video because it actually just floored me a little bit. He did a quick test on the Chinese fluke meter, the 12E, which is about a $70 Canadian peso meter right out of China, and it is a real fluke. It is a high quality, nothing wrong with it meter. After he did the initial video, he put out this because his viewers noticed that these buttons on the uh, faceplate here are actually covered by the main faceplate, indicating that they might work. And he tested them and sure enough, the frequency measurement, the duty cycle measurement, and I believe temperature, actually work on this meter despite being covered by the main faceplate uh, the board same one as uh, as the ones that support these functions so you can poke a very small hole 3d print a button little conductive backer on it and you've basically taken this cheap real fluke meter up another three notches and i can vouch having frequency measurement and uh, duty cycle measurement is extremely handy on a cheap meter. You'd be surprised at how often you'll use it. It's, it's very handy once you, know, once you have it. So very, very cool. Uh, I give AVE credit. He didn't hide the fact he didn't know this. He put out another video right away because, hey, why not? Spread the word. Very, very cool. Anyway, what else we got? 
I had to share this. You guys might have been way ahead of me on this. This is a channel I have never shared here before because I was never a subscriber. It's called The Backyard Scientist. I suspect a bunch of you have seen his videos. I miss them somehow. Very similar to Grant Thompson, uh, a cross between Grant and Cody's lab, I'd say. A lot of explosions of molten metal and liquefied salt and a lot of aluminum. Really, really neat. Uh, I ran across it due to a YouTube suggestion. I was blown away. It's a 1.5 million subscriber channel, and I can see why. His recent videos, uh, if you don't watch any of them, this one... This one was from, I don't know the date. Pouring molten salt into water. If you only watch one video on his channel, you should check this out. This is nutty, absolutely crazy. Uh, good high speed footage of it. Neat, uh, he has other tech stuff on the channel too. Uh, really cool coverage of uh, a science expo and stuff, but I missed this one. I was never a subscriber, thought I would share it because maybe there's some of you that weren't either. I love finding channels like this and it blows me away that I can still find ones that have 10 million views on a video in the niche that we're all sort of watching and I've never seen it before. Thought it was great. And Tony, oh, Hiller Streams here, Grant's wife, Slough the Messes. Yeah, true. Tony said fluke rules. Couldn't agree more. Uh, all I'll say is I trust my, liked, my life to my fluke meters. I don't trust my life to my cheapies. It's that simple. I love my flukes. They're worth every penny. William said, what drones are at your store under $100 would you recommend? I would recommend the JJRC H12C. No problem. I think it's about $60 to $70 with a camera. The camera is not the best. But there's a video on my channel where I proved you can lift a Mobius with it. Short flight times when you're hauling a Mobius. But the H12C is the most stable cheap quad that I have played with. And then there's the Alien X250 thing. And it is uh, less stable but a better camera. Same price range. So either of those. I would go with the H12C. Uh, good bang for the buck. And... Tony said he set his pool on fire. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Um, Jay said, I wonder if Amazon would take someone to court if they make it into a product like the Echo. No, I don't think so. Well, I might. Don't know. Doubt it. Uh, I think they, they released the, the API uh, with the purpose of getting people to use the platform. Most consumers aren't going to aren't going to buy from a third party I don't think you never know tough to say and poor yeah Roid Raid looked him up cool I'm glad some of you maybe hadn't heard of him because it blew me away that you hadn't that I hadn't and cool awesome I like when I can share a channel that you guys might enjoy. And I really love it when I run across one I've never seen before. It blows me away every time. Uh, I'm on YouTube a lot. and It just surprises me when there's brand new stuff. Never heard of. Cool stuff. A little bit from the shop. Uh, a little departure last week. It was kind of last minute. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did... Be I did a video on something that I've had to do in the field many, many times in my life. And I've tried many ways of making a soldering iron in the field, most of which end up just burning your hands and making a mess and don't work, period. And so much so that I, I have uh, a butane portable uh, soldering iron that only works when you have the thing with you. And I have chunks of solder in every toolbox, every glove box. And this method of making a portable, like a DIY impromptu soldering iron has worked every time for me. I hope you guys like the video. It has one particular instance I can tell you. This got me back moving. I had to drop the fuel tank down on a car in the bush because a chipmunk had gotten above the fuel tank, chewed off the sending unit and the fuel pump wires, and there wasn't enough slack above the tank for me to do anything other than butt joint and solder them or crimp or twist together and I did not want to take that tank again down after so I used this method to solder the wires in place in the middle of the bush and that car drove for 
until it rotted to the ground. So I hope I hope that worked out well. I hope you guys like that. It was a it's a handy skill. It served me extremely well, and I, I like sharing when things silly things. I never even thought of making a video on it until I saw someone else share a picture of a similar method. One of the other ways that I tried without the coil, and it doesn't work. Uh, Tony said he liked that. Cool, awesome, awesome. Yep, yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't do such a good demo in the video. I could have done better, but. Uh, I just wanted to get it out there. You can definitely solder PCB with it, no problem. Uh, just gotta clean the tip better than I did in the video. A little sneak peek, uh, I already mentioned it. I want to do the video on the DJI tips. I've been working on the script for that. I have some tips for the quadcopter stuff, as well as I have at least three videos coming up on uh, Arduino projects. Uh, some things I've been playing with in the background, but haven't finished enough to do a video on them yet. I found some flaws in the code that I was using and I don't like sharing any code or a tutorial unless I know it's going to work for other people without major failure. So I'm working on those. Uh, definitely a few electronics videos coming up as well as the RC boat review which you'll see soon and that's just uh, as I said on previous broadcasts that one's Mainly just for me, for fun, uh, the FT-011 race boat. I'm really looking forward to giving that a try. And uh, yeah, we'll do some cool overhead shotted shots of that, and it'll be a good time. Uh, William said, check out Evan Kale. Can you post that in the G Plus community? Um, and then I'll check it out after. And then other people can check it out too. Cool. That is pretty much it for the show today, guys. I hope you had a fun time. I hope you enjoyed the show. Maybe uh, found a YouTube channel or video you didn't know about or some cool news. I really appreciate my time with you guys. I really love this time. You guys are amazing. Uh, cool little community here we have. I look forward to hanging out with you every week. So I truly appreciate all the feedback, guidance, advice you guys give me and the support you guys give each other. It really makes it fun. I hope you have a fantastic week. Build something cool this week. Share it with the world. You never know whose life it might change. Have a great one, guys. Cheers. <laughs>